and soul. Soul is the topic we're talking about today, and body be preserved blameless. That's how come you can have mistakes, wrong, sins to, some de- to a degree, and be blameless. That's what he wants. That's what his ex- that's what his expectation is. He don't want you doing them. <laughs> I'll tell you, we're going to have next week's sermon just absolutely remodeled this week. I called brother down in Indiana because I just got something hot off the press. I said, could I believe it? Well, that's what the book said. So I believed it. But I thought I'd call him and just crank him up. Jesus is a sweet-smelling savor to God. Is that right? And that's what he is. He says, are you going to tell me we stink? I said, absolutely, I'm going to tell you we stink. We have a, we have a, a savor before God. But it's Christ's savor because we're in him. You say, why don't he hear? He hears, man. Your aroma. Ruth said, I said last night I had an aroma. And Ruth said, yes, you do, more or less. (laughs) We're on. I got to watch what I'm saying. I see the little red light. Okay, so here we are. You will find out more about that next week. Huh? No, the aroma. The sweet savor. The cider vinegar stinks. Mixed with a little. (laughs) Anyhow, here we are. The scripture we end up with last week was... uh, we're going to purify your soul by obeying the truth. And this is how we're going to do it. 1 Peter 1.22, saying this, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Unfeigned. You don't fake it anymore. Unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, Interesting how these subjects all blend together, isn't it? Our spirit is saved complete. We've been talking about that this morning. And, but let me read to you. And our souls are being purified by the word of God. And in of this is the love one for another. That's how you know. You want to measure how your soul is moving on? How do you love one another? Easy measuring stick device. Okay. Uh, John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give you, that ye love one another as, just as. <laughs> I, just, I just love the book when it gets direct. You know, look at this. That ye love one another as, just as, I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Notice, this is not a command to love God. It is a command to love one another fervently, just as Jesus loved. Ooh, isn't that something? Now, this is something that came to my attention years ago, but it's about the first time I I mentioned it. James 1.8, let me just do this with you. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He can't hardly make it down the road. He just bangs off the banks, the ditches, in one ditch and out of another ditch. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Either it's truth or it's not truth. If it's truth, go with it. You can't bounce it off and, and modify it. You can't make it just your own, a modification of the truth. Whoa. You say, well, I've tried that for years. How's it work? Huh? <laughs> okay. Wow. His journey, the course of conduct, a way, a manner, a manner of thinking, feeling, deciding. A double-minded man made up of two Greek words. Disc, meaning twice, 
and psyche, meaning soul. So you have a double-minded man that is a double-souled man. Simple, isn't it? The word that comes to mind is, you probably won't appreciate it. Zach will say, he did it again. That person is unstable. But that's exactly what he said. He's unstable. Unstable in all his ways. Unstable. You move the word out by itself. Unstable doesn't sound so good, does it? He says it's unstable. He's thinking two different things. He believes and yet doubts. The scripture, and the scripture is this to the man, he said, believe only. Can we come to find that in Luke? And he says, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. That's going to be part of next week, too. James 4 8. You say, You're hastening, I am. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you, except if I get it all preached next week. Uh, bring your friends and neighbors. They haven't heard it. And, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Who purifies that heart? Mm-hmm. Ye purify your heart, ye double-minded. How are you going to do that? You can do it with the word of God till you love one another fervently. Ooh. By the word of God. Wow. 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 Isn't that cool? Luke 8, 50. <laughs> I think it's 8, 50. Whew. Consider him that endured such contradiction. No, that's not what I want. Oh, unless you be worried and faint in your minds. It, it is in a way, uh, but that's not what I got in here. That's what I got in here, but it's not what I'm looking for. Huh? Oh, and when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and ye shall be made whole. See that word whole? You know what that word is in the Greek? It's the same word we use for salvation. That word is sozo. That's healed, delivered, on goes a grist of things, prosperity. All these sort of things is in that word whole or being made whole. Get the set of notes and, and look at it. Now, are you worried and wearied? Wearied. Any of you weary? You worked all night? You worked all night? Are you weary? <laughs> okay. I, I, I told your husband this week, I said, when she first started coming, I said, she looked kind of tough in the morning. I said, but she don't look so tired anymore. <laughs> don't work so hard. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are you wearied and do you faint in your minds or your souls? Hebrew 12, 3 says this. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Consider. Think. Ponder. Ponder him. He took abuse. Conflict. You consider him and lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Now, let me add this. I, I've got it broken down here. Let me read it to you. Consider, study, ponder, deliberate, deliberate, examine, understand, comprehend, think upon him that endured such contradiction of sinners continually against himself, lest ye be wearied, toil, tired, sickened, and faint, relax, exhausted, weakened in your minds, your soul. You see? Fainting takes place, you thought it took place in your body. Fainting takes place here first. Control, controlling our thinking controls our endurance. Anywhere who is weary and prone to fainting has already been thinking wrong. You say, well, after a while, you just get tired. I, I agree with you. But it shouldn't be in the normal few hours. No. It's not what happens to us on the outside that causes these reactions. It's what happens to us in the inside. Wow. 
Fainting takes place in your mind. We will not withdraw. We cleave by trust in him unto eternal preservation. Listen. listen. Uh, Hebrews 10, 39. For we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now see, you know, whoopsie daisy, the saving of the soul. It's, poss it, it's not only possible, you do make inroads in purifying and saving this. Interesting, isn't it? To the saving of the soul. Wow. The Amplified, let me just read the Amplified and we'll move on to this. Uh, Hebrews 10, 39, Amplified. Okay. But our way is not of those who draw back to eternal misery, perdition, and are utterly destroyed, but we are those who believe, who cleave to, trust in, rely on God through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and by faith preserve the soul. It's going with us, folks. That's all there is to that. It's going with us. The body we leave behind, but we get a glorified body. Isn't that interesting? Are you all ready for this? Paul says, we currently have the mind of Christ. And you say, where is it? First Corinthians 2 16 for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of Christ is that true well we have the mind of Christ strong says we have as a possession what an awesome statement to have any portion of God's wisdom bestowed upon us or transferred to us we have the mind of Christ The mind of Christ knows how much? All things. Interesting, isn't it? Some people say, if you look at my school grades, there's something wrong with that. So which one is right? Your school grades or the Word of God? <laughs> Experience or what God says. In this case, both are correct. In our new spirits, we are completely new creatures. Our new spirit, our new man, you put on, which has been renewed. This is Colossians 3.10, by the way. Been renewed in knowledge after the same image of him that created us. Is that what it says? Hmm? Okay. I don't know. I didn't have this highlighted. First John 1.20, we might throw in for good measure. Uh, That will cause him to scramble for a moment. 20. Uh, 120. I think. 220, excuse me, I'm wrong. I take full responsibility. Chris was warning me this morning. She says, I'm going to check all these outs. And then I spoke them wrong. For we have an unction from the Holy One. And what do we know? All things. An unction, an unction of the Spirit from the Holy One that knows all things. That Spirit is in you. Okay. I'm on, uh, I'm on the bottom of page three. The special, I'm, I skipped to there, I think. Uh, spiritual ministry, a, renewed my, a renovated mind and a measure of faith. <sighs> Romans 12, 1 through 3, I quoted it to you a while ago. Uh, before we did other things. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable or your spiritual or your service of ministry. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, transfigured, metamorphosed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Wow, isn't that great? No? Isn't that great? Amen. Thank you, brother. 
or I say. This is a conjunction. It's a different sentence, but it's a continuation of the thought here. It says, be not, and I'm going to read it now, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man, what? The measure of faith. The measure of faith. God, who dealt it? God dealt you the measure of faith. He doesn't have different buckets, different shovels, different spoons, none of those things. The. Many versions will say in a something. Now let me, now let me read this to you with some of the words emphasized. And be not conformed to the same pattern of this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing, the renovation of your mind that you may prove is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. For a conjunction or continuing the thought of the prior verse, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but do think, do think from the correct viewpoint, as maybe as an example is, you're a joint heir with Christ. Don't think of yourself more than you are, but think of yourself within the parameters of the Word of God and what He says you are by Himself being that. As according as God has dealt to every man the measure, not a measure of faith. God, have you ever noticed, God gives you what's His. Now that is noteworthy. It's worth putting it down in big, bold letters. God gives you what's his. Jesus gave you what was his. The Spirit gives you what was the Son's. That's exactly what he does. Wow. Excerpt. When I said I'd, I was going to give you an excerpt from, and I'm going to read this to you now, and after I'm done, we'll emphasize one verse. Our spirit and our soul and the heart and their interaction is based on your decisions, my decisions. This is a portion. Thoughts from the heart, from the soul, could, would include evil thought evil treasure. The product out of the, out of the heart could include both good and evil, depending on the degree of the soul's renewal that has taken place and is now in effect. It is possible to reveal, reveal an ebb and flow back and forth, depending on the extent of the soul's transformation or transfiguration, metamorphosis, or change. This includes the soul proving and conforming to the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Therefore, the variables of the heart are dependent upon the soul's decision. The soul is self-conscious. Therefore, then, self and pride in self must recognize the spirit as the supreme and only authority. For the spirit only supplies stability to the heart or proceeds to reestablish God's original condition. We wonder why we are volatile with a tongue out of control, a lack of consistency in our life and our actions. The condition, ready? Ready? The condition is simply due to the fact we do not have a pure heart, really a, a purified soul, psyche, mind, intellect, will, and emotion. First Peter 1.22, seeing we have purified, seeing ye have purified, cleansed from defilement your soul and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. This is a continuing process, a continuing decision or decisions a pure heart is attainable by allowing the Spirit to supply the good things. Are you ready for the last sentence? Sorry. Please. The soul must remain dethroned and vote in agreement with the Spirit. What is in the heart, good or evil, is only there 
by your consent or your decisions. Wow. Your focus determines your peace. Isaiah 26, 3, in conclusion. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, salome, all is well, or wholly well, W-H-O-L-L-Y, completely well, whose mind is stayed in a fixed condition, fixed position and condition on thee, because he trusteth, is confident, secure, and sure in thee. The scripture clearly links our peace to keeping our mind stayed on trusting in God. This reveals that our emotions follow our thoughts, positive or negative. Father, the truth of the matter is before us. You ensure victory. We determine our focus. There's wondrous victory in you. Wondrous victory in the provision of Jesus Christ and his atoning death, burial, and resurrection. Awesome. Awesome the things that he has included us with and for and created in us. The means and the wherefore, the ways and the highways. The spirit of God to lead us into all truth. The word of God that remains unchanging. Father, we just give you praise, honor, and glory. Amen. We do praise you, worship you, honor you, adore you, and say thank you for providing for us truth under the bright light of the Spirit of God and of the Godhead in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Glory.